Last summer, Paul Pogba, Nemanja Matic, Juan Mata, Jesse Lingard, there were quite a few. Edinson Cavani. Manchester United let a lot of players go with their contracts expiring on free transfers. And in this summer coming up, there are quite a few important names on this list. Either their contracts are expiring or Manchester United will have to exercise a one-year contract extension. So what I'm going to do in this video is run through all of those players and we can, well, I can let you know whether I think Eric Ten Hag should be extending those contracts or considering letting those players leave. That's what I'm going to run through in this video because it's such an important part of this whole rebuild. It's not only getting the right players in, getting the wrong players out. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But let's dive straight into this one. And let's take a look at the list here of the players whose contracts are either expiring or that need an extension. And this is the list here. I'm going to run through them one by one in order. So we've got Marcus Rashford, Luke Shaw, Diego Delo, Ronaldo, Fred De Gea, Juan Zebe. You've got Phil Jones and Tom Heaton down there. Garnacho. I was going to speak about him later in the show. I can mention him now. He signed his first professional contract back in 2021. I imagine a new contract is going to have to come ASAP Rocky because of whatever he signed there, his stock has significantly risen since then. But let's run through this, as I said, in order. Right, player by player. And the first player, well, not the first player on that list, but the first player on my list here is David De Gea. Now, as we can see, De Gea's contract, look, it expires in the summer, but we do have an option to extend it by one more year. And in my opinion, I think that's an option that Manchester United should be taking. Right? I think we go back to David De Gea. I think we should be doing that. Big old tick. I don't think De Gea is going to... Well, I don't personally feel like he suits this system, this Eric Ten Hag system completely. He, he, he doesn't. I imagine he'll improve as the season goes on. He'll get more confident, more confident with the defence in front of him. But as part of Ten Hag's proper rebuild, we need a ball-playing goalkeeper a la Edison, a la Allison. Don't think that'll be David De Gea. That's my opinion. Now, you might disagree on that one, but I think I don't want to lose De Gea on a free. Giving him a one-year contract extension, I'm fine with that. Giving him a full contract extension, I don't think that's the case. So while I'm putting a tick there next to David De Gea's name, that's for one more year rather than a full four to five year. That's what I want to say anyway. But quickly before we move on, I'm really excited about this one. I really genuinely am. I've been building up to this, and here we are on Thursday, the inaugural United People's TV Poker Tournament. It's going to be happening on 888 Poker, Thursday at 8 p.m. on the 22nd of September. There's hundreds of you that have signed up to it. Free to join, $150 to the winner. And it's going to be cracking. I'm looking forward to doing this, the first community event, and so many more like in the future. I've tried to put in a little bit of practice in before the tournament. This is how I've been getting on. I thought I'd try and double up nice and early. Got 10 jack. I thought that was a decent little hand. So I went in, top pair, nice, going in aggressive. And yeah, I pretty much doubled up straight away. That's what you got to do sometimes in the early doors. Then I went a little bit aggressive with this one there, queen. And again, I won. So I've got a nice little stack, but then I went in a bit aggressive on this guy towards the end. I tried to call this bluff with here with this, but I walked straight into a flush. <laughs> that didn't work out quite so well. But I'm looking forward now to getting this tournament underway on Thursday. So make sure you follow the link in the description and you sign up. Remember, you have to be over 18 to enter and be part of the UK. You can use my code POKER20 to deposit $10 and get $20. But use that link in the description. Join the United All-In Tournament over on AAA Poker. It's on Thursday at 8 p.m. Make sure you get involved. It's the first community event. I'm looking forward to doing more like it in the future. Fingers crossed I win. I won't, but let me see how you get on. Thursday night, the first community event for United People's TV. Come on, get involved if you can if you're over 18. I can't wait to do that. I can't wait to do more like that in the future. But look, we've spoken about David De Gea. Let's move on to the other goalkeeper on that list. And that's Tom Heaton. And in my opinion, I mean, Tom Heaton's a third goalkeeper. I don't think he's... I think Tom Heaton's an absolutely fine third goalkeeper. I would give him a contract extension. I don't really see why Manchester United wouldn't do that. It seems sound enough. And a third goalkeeper is somebody who really is going to be playing anyway. So I'd be fine enough with Tom Heaton getting that. A player who I don't think will be getting that contract extension is a Philip Jones. Can't make that cross. I mean, he could technically make that cross. But, but Phil Jones, man. It's not his fault. He's just been unlucky beyond belief. 
Um, his body's made of glass and there's absolutely no way that Manchester United will be extending this contract. So I think this is pre pretty much, in my opinion, a rhetorical question as to whether or not Phil Jones down there will be getting that contract extended for a further year. I think there's absolutely no chance that happens. Moving on from him, I think we come to our first real tough one. Because I think there's probably justification either side, either way. It depends which sort of standpoint you've got. Luke Shaw, as you can see down here, we have the op option to extend it. Manchester United got the option to extend his contract by one more year. Now, Tyrell Madasir has broken through and become our first choice centre back, or first choice left back. And we've got uh, Alvaro Fernandez has gone out on loan to Preston. In my personal opinion, now you might disagree with this for sure. Maybe actually for sure. But I wouldn't extend Luke Shaw's. I would look to be, or if I did, I would just be doing that to protect the, and this is, this is I suppose, where you're going to get the crossroads. Because all of these here, we're not talking about full-on contracts for Rashford, Shaw, Delo, anybody. We're talking about the option to extend for a further year. So in that sense, I would probably, I'm torn on this one. I don't think Luke Shaw's got a long-term future at Manchester United. I think he's had a long time at Manchester United. But the Malaysia arrival has just breathed a new fresh air into this team. I think Shaw's going to struggle to get back into it across the course of the year. I suppose me putting that down there is saying that I'm willing to let Luke Shaw leave on a free transfer. Maybe United wouldn't do that. They'd go for the option to extend and then try and sell him. But I think I've got the in my head that Luke Shaw, I'd like to sell him. At some point, I don't think he's a long term future player for Manchester United under Eric Ten Hag. Uh, who's next on this list here? We've got a right, poor lad, man. Talk about injuries. Add Axel Twenzebe to that list. A player who I think had so much promise at Manchester United, but ultimately his injuries stopped him from ever truly breaking into that first team at Manchester United. For me, Axel Twenzebe is a player that we lose on a free this summer. And we're just going to have to say, you know what? What if? What if? And unfortunately for him, he's just he's one of those players. A bit like James Wilson. Uh, a bit like Will Keane as well. Youngsters who really shone in our academy. And he just have to put a what if next to the name because of injuries. Just because of injuries. It's a real shame for him. Now, someone I think, is, it, again, this is, some of these, in my opinion, are rhetorical questions. And I think this one is absolutely a rhetorical question. There is, without a shadow of doubt, that this bloke's going to get his contract extended. Diogo Delo has been an absolute breath of fresh air this season at right back. His improvement defensively too, his ability going forward, his link-up play, his overall understanding of the Ten Hag system. Really big, shining example of the players that were on the fringe or something, the players that weren't considered integral to United. Look at, look at them now. Look what happens if you take my system on board. He's shone in the Ten Hag system. And absolutely, if we're looking at this con these contracts here, Diogo Delo, for me, this, the club absolutely has to extend that contract without a shadow of a doubt. And I reckon this one will probably cause debate as well. Now, I'll get my opinion out straight away here before I sort of explain myself. I personally think we should be looking at extending Fred's contract by one more year. Again, I reiterate here, we're not talking about a new bumper five-year contract. We're talking about the option to extend by a further year. I still feel that Fred can and will be a good squad player for Manchester United this season. I think he can and will be for Manchester United next season. I still think we need another central midfielder in the sort of role that Frankie de Jong would play. But I think Fred... I wouldn't want to see him leaving a free transfer. I think he can be a good squad player for Manchester United. And, and again, reiterate, like I have a hundred times already, as long as these are one-year contract extensions, we're not just talking about Fred on a new four to five-year deal. That's a good, smart move. It's when you start giving players like Rojo and buy not just contract extensions, but new three, four-year deals, and you get stuck with a player that you can't get rid of, a la Phil Jones. That's the thing that United need to avoid. But in terms of giving a one-year contract extension to Fred, yeah, man, I'm absolutely fine with that. And here come the big names, I suppose. Cristiano Ronaldo. So Manchester United 
here i've got the option to extend by one further year so this is a two-year deal with the option to extend for a third he's in his second year and i again in my opinion this is a pretty rhetorical question I don't think there's any chance that Manchester United extend or should extend the contract of Cristiano Ronaldo. And there's no agenda. I mean, the amount of times I've been accused of having an agenda against Ronaldo has been you know, unreal. Uh, but ne next summer, uh, our focus is going to be, in my opinion, on signing a striker. Ideally signing two strikers, but that, that's what we need there for sure. Ronaldo, he does not suit the Ten Hag system. It's a little bit too intense for legs that are 37 years old, going, thir going on 38. It's just, it requires too much movement. It requires the, too much dynamic movement. You can't just goal hang. You can't just be that player that you be, that you were around with. You don't have to do anything. Just hang around the box because everyone else is going to do it for you. It doesn't happen at Man United. won't happen at Man United. In my opinion, there's no chance that Ronaldo's contract should be extended. And then it goes to, a, to Marcus Rashford. And again, in my opinion, this is a pretty rhetorical question. Because there's absolutely no way. And I'm not just talking about the fact that he's just coming into a bit of form now. No way the idea of losing Rashford on a free would ever be entertained by Manchester United. So I imagine at some point soon we're going to be hearing about A, the contract extension of Marcus Rashford and also wider contract talks. The idea of giving Marcus Rashford a, four, like a, three, a new three to four year deal, I can have a conversation about. I'll be fine with. Same goes for Diogo Delo. I wouldn't want it for Ronaldo for obvious reasons. That would never happen. Fred, I think you have to have questions about a contract that length. Luke Shaw, I don't think it should happen. Phil Jones, it can't happen. No chance. Tom Heaton, no chance. David De Gea, in my opinion, shouldn't be doing, we shouldn't be talking about contracts of that length with him either. But that's all nine discussed from this list. And I'll run through it here from the very, very top in terms of who I think should be given these contract renewals. Well, one, one year contract extensions. De Gea and Heaton, I think we should. Phil Jones, no chance. Diogo Delo, I think we should. This one, I'll be honest, there's a question mark around that. Which I'd like you to let me know what you think about that. Look at that. Nice, nicely drawn question mark. What you think about this in the comments. Could, would you be happy enough if United lost Luke Shaw on a free transfer this summer? Is the question I'm asking. Uh, scrolling down there, I don't think Twanzebi will get one. I think Fred should be getting one. But probably not a new like three, four, five year deal. I'd certainly be having to give him a contract extension for a year, though. And I think down here, Ronaldo, there should be no chance. And Rashford, absolutely. But I'd be really interested to know what you think about this. Again, the international break gives us a chance to look at the wider conversations about what's coming up in the future. And that's what, one, that's what this video is designed for. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. I'm going to be doing more of these. As I said already, make sure you sign up to the tournament tomorrow night at 8 p.m. I can't wait for it. Hopefully I win. I mean, I won't win, but you never know. And you can let me know what you think about all those contracts in the comments below.